All right. Hello, everyone. I am Judge James, the co-host of the Living for Crits uh, Sunday night show and, uh, and Twitch stream. And I'm also a co-host on the Glowburn podcast uh, with my good friend Mark Plord here. And I want to welcome you here to a very special Living for Crits experience as we demo the Darkest House, currently a Monty Cook Games Kickstarter that is funded, is doing awesome, uh, but we got a chance to show off some of the mechanics and some of the way the game works. And when the opportunity arose, I had to jump out and say, yes, please. Um, so before we move on, since I have four lovely guests with me, uh, I thought I'd let them introduce themselves, starting with the loveliest, Mr. Mark Plord. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Mark Plord, I am the other co-host of the Globurn podcast. Um, I am playing uh, Ruckshard Splintercrack, uh, commonly known to his friends as Splinter, a dwarf cleric from Dungeon Crawl Classics. Awesome. Uh, level, level two dwarf cleric from Dungeon Crawl Classics. And we'll go into in a moment, like some of what that's going to translate over to here. Uh, but next, we're going to talk to my other good friend, Maitri. Hi, I'm uh, Maitri. I'll be playing a level 7 drow sorcerer named Thrail. She's from uh, d and 5th edition. Uh, I'm pretty new to the tabletop space generally, but uh, I love playing just about everything. I uh, like running PBTA and uh, d and games and uh, really excited to be here. Next over, let me uh, bounce the dark and uh, horror-filled horror horror-filled uh, uh, ball over to, to Ray. Oh, all right. Uh, so I'm Ray Slikinski, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Thirsty Meeple or Ray S, depending if you're looking at tabletop stuff or uh, tech geekery uh, in that order. Um, yeah, I play lots of RPGs. I run them. Glad to be here. And finally, last but not least, uh, Andy. Hi, I'm Andy. I am a frequent player of most of James's games. Uh, most of Mark's games too, actually. <laughs> yeah. mostly, and that's the other two. I'm mostly a player, not much of a GM. I just jump in wherever I'm needed and wanted in games. And uh, I don't have any blogs or anything like that. Just, just play. I do want to note that the reason I want to make sure Andy was here, besides being the person that's played with me the most over the last seven years of any gamer, is that Andy's like the most professional player in that like when you show a game off, he learns the system in like seven seconds and then <laughs> can like help you through it, even though, uh, you, know, you know, he's been spent less time with the game than you have. So he is the quintessential perfect player to have at a table. And yes, if you watch some of my very few actual play videos, since we don't really do a lot of actual play videos on this channel, uh, Andy has been on, I think, all of them. Pretty much, most of them. All right, so first off, for those of you that are joining us that have no idea uh, what my show and channel is about, yes, I typically run a Dungeon Crawl Classic style uh, uh, conversation here in Living for Crits with Judge Evie, my counterpart on, on Sunday nights. And, uh, but I, I also am a huge fan of a lot of the Monty Cook Games products. And, uh, but when, when we record, this is about as good as it gets. Actually, right now, the fact that I have a background and I'm wearing a decent shirt that's put together and my hair is relatively done, it means this is currently surpassing what Living for Crits usually puts out. Uh, but if you're looking for a super polished, you know, like, I don't know, critical role-esque kind of video, this ain't it. But what this is, is this is probably the closest to something that's going to look like your game table. Because for this game, I'm going to run it through a Zoom chat and we're recording a Zoom chat. There's no editing. So this is the, this is what you're going to get. And I think there's been a couple of really great questions regarding The Darkest House and what it is. And that is, how does it, how does it help the GM uh, tell a tale and to the players? And the second one is, how does it work? Like, what, am I, what, is, what do I do with this? So 
I'm going to show a short demo of just a few rooms of this house. And I'm going to show it the first couple rooms completely from the player's perspective. And the last room, I'm going to pull back the curtain a bit, you know, and give you all a bit of like some kind of creepy, uh, like jump scare, like appearance, <laughs> you know? And, uh, uh, sorry. I've been wanting to do that since I learned I could do that. And show you the, what's actually behind the curtain, not a jump scare. There might be a jump scare at some point. Uh, I do want to caution everyone. This is uh, still a game that's in process of being completed. So while we go through, not everything is going to be as polished or finished as what you're going to see in the, the last uh, product from MCG. But I think that the main components are going to be there. And one of the biggest parts of this game, as you heard each of my four players discuss who they're playing, we have a character from Dungeon Crawl Classics, a character from Alternity, a character from Numenera, and a character from Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. How the hell is this going to happen? And that's one of the really cool things about the Darkest House, is it's this Rosetta Stone of Systems, and it's giving us a system to allow these characters to express themselves in the darkest house at the same time. So let's talk about these characters first. And we're gonna start with the one that I know is the most complete because I've been uh, going back and forth with him since Thursday. Ray, uh, what is Isma over in Numenera again? So Isma uh, is a swift jack who shreds the walls of the world and is a tier one. So uh, just a baby in Numenera. And we translated that into a baby over here in the darkest house. You have a rating of one. Yeah. And we're going to say a rating of two whenever you're dealing with quickness or dexterity as well as perception. And since you have that cool focus in Numenera of being able to shred the walls of the world, whenever you're doing something with movement and, you know, and, and speed, we'll give you a boon on your roll. And we'll discuss the, this, yeah, discuss. We'll discuss the dice mechanics when yeah. we get to that point. So every character is a truth and a lie. Now, a truth is something that you believe that is true. And a lie is something that you believe that is not true. What are the truth, what's the truth and lie of, of Isma Shan? So Isma thinks um, that, uh, that it, if they can push through and just like do it as fast as possible or get away as fast as possible, that speed is literally the, the key to success here. That if I could just move um, out of the way, if I could dodge that bullet, if I could uh, grab that uh, knife wielding maniac uh, before they do, then then that is my my answer to success. Okay, so what is the lie? So in our Numenera game, uh, the party was first uh, found in um, effectively like a, a zoo, um, all kept captive, and the lie. Uh, very much like um, a, a convict in some ways, um, that they never want to be trapped again. But it was safe there. So maybe, maybe that was better than where I am now. Maybe spending an eternity in a house is the perfect place for Isma. Exactly. Andy, uh, let's talk about, about Murvok. So uh, where's Murvok in Alternity? Murvok is a mechalis, which is Basically, physically, if you've ever seen Star Trek The Borg, he's basically they look, look, look like, like, like that, except for they don't have a collective consciousness. But they are very mechanical and they have, they all have brains that are mechanically enhanced. And uh, <clears throat> in his own setting, he can, he can jack into everything with like these tendrils that come out of his arm. And uh, <clears throat> he's a, Probably the least equipped to be in this setting because he's from the future and this is like a haunted house type thing. But I don't know, uh, maybe you're the most equipped. You don't know. Um, yeah, of course. 
So we said, since you're, and there is a translation guide to this where it says what your level is in different systems and how it turns into a rating. So a level three character in a, a one to 20 level scale game, you have a rating of two. And you're, when you're using uh, mechanical or engineering abilities, or you can say you are, it's gonna be a rating of three. And then your hacking, when you hack in, in alternative, we play the original edition alternative on Wednesday nights, which is uh, the alternative from 1998. When you hack, you send this shadow file into the computers. It's an alternate person of yourself, kind of like Tron or something like that. In the house, that shadow exists as a shadow that you can control in the house. You don't know why, but it's there, this shadow archer. And when uh, ever that works, that shadow is a rating of two like you do. What is Murvok's truth and lie? Okay. So Murvok's truth is information equals strength because he's like a computer brain. He's all about finding out what's going on with the inner workings of things and uh, beating things by, uh, you know, finding out information and stuff. How about your lie? My lie is, uh, sorry, I think I'm going to close it. Everything can be solved without violence because in the alternative setting, Mervak comes from a planet where he, that was ravaged by civil war and his side basically wiped out completely the other side. And it was a di different species actually. And <clears throat> so they, after they did this, they were distraught and felt bad about it. So they, mecha they, they mechanically through their, cause they made it all computerized. They took out all of the violent tendencies of their, of their uh, species. And uh, they're all about information and knowledge and they don't, they don't, they're very even keeled and they don't get violent very often. Gotcha. So there's an alternative character. Now let's go over to Dungeon Crawl Classics. Mark, who do you have that just survived the one who watches from below earlier today? I, uh, yeah, I'm still a little traumatized by that one. Unlike Ray's character, Timmy, you make it. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy did not. <laughs> but Splinter did. Yeah, the right I, head I, I mean, that battle. I mean, if, if you had just died, I might have been able to bring you back. But no, 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 your head disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, because now Splinter got a one-way ticket to a house. Yeah, so I am I am playing a, a Splinter. He is a, a dwarven uh, cleric of Danethar, which is a uh, like an ancestor spirit, god of crafts, that kind of a thing. Um, he's got a bunch of, uh, he's got healing abilities. He's got a bunch of different clerical spells. Uh, it's got this cool magic shield that kind of pro projects a force field around him. Um, so we said that your character's rating two because uh, in DCC, essentially it's a one to 10 level system. So you want to double your character's level to see how it compares to D&D. So it's a rating two with a rating three for anything resisting damage because you're a tough and hardy dwarf. Yep. And you can cast healing magic at a rating three. We translated your magic shield as giving you a boon when rolling against both physical and mental damage, either or. And uh, I do want to note for any of my DCC folks watching this, the reason he's a dwarf cleric and not just a dwarf or a cleric is the DCC annual does have an option for that. So before you try rules lawyering me, <laughs> look at the other book and realize you can do it. So what's your truth and lie? So my truth is that my god, Danethar, always has my back. And my lie is that my faith is unshakable. Mm. Nice. So we're going to wrap here with my tray for a specific reason that we've spent the least amount of time converting her character over to this, not only converting, but translating it. So we might do a little bit of that right now. So, so Tree, what is, introduce us to your character. Uh, Thrail is a level 7 drow sorcerer from D&D 5th edition. Um, she is fairly powerful. Um, she, her, her goals are just to sort of get increasingly powerful. And so she puts herself in situations where she kind of stretches her that arcane muscle like as much as she can and puts herself in increasingly dangerous position so that she can 
just try out increasingly messed up spells. <laughs> and and that's who she is. That's and we said, right now we're looking yeah. at rating three for uh, the character itself, the seventh level D&D character, maybe with a rating four for deception and arcana since you are uh, so, uh, you're, I mean, you have a 19 charisma in that game, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what else? Let's figure something else out here. What's else something you think that we need to translate over now that's integral to your character? Um, I, one of the things I feel like narratively is really important to her is some, is in the D and D world, the meta magic spell of subtle spell and twint. Okay. So those two specific pieces are really important to her as a character and me as a player. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to figure out a way to translate those. So subtle spells specifically meaning that you're able to cast spells without verbal and somatic components. Okay. I think that you can just have that. There's no need to translate that over. Awesome. And twinned is basically you cast two spells for the price of one. Then let's do this. Okay. So two spells so for the price of one. Double fireballs. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Let's let's do this. Let's just say that uh, you know that you're maybe for a rating three possibly, but if you're going to cast a spell, let's just let you cast two spells. You know, so for the so we'll just both be rating three like your level. You know, it won't boost into a four since there's two of them. But awesome. we'll let's make that work. And I invite all of you as we're playing. Don't worry about having to convert the entire character sheet over. Just Let's figure it out as we go. That's the beauty of the system. We almost forgot, uh, Maitre, your truth and lie for Thrail. So what is the truth and lie of this character? Her truth is that she is capable of great arcane strength and power. Uh, and her lie, uh, which I, I thought was super fun to come to, is that she is unbeatable. She is, and uh, she, because everything she's come against so far, she is more or less of its rated, including a silver dragon. So she has no reason to think she will ever be beaten. So <laughs> deal with the dragon. We'll see if you can deal yeah. with the house. Now, I do want to note something. We won't be able to get into all the details of the truths and the lies. One, uh, one special component of this game is how, as players, you know, they kind of come to this place and they're going to battle their own truths and lies during their, their adventuring in campaign style or adventure style in this house. The, the house is something that can work in any system, can be featured in any system, but does not have to be the be all end all locale for uh, a setting. It's some place you visit and you might come back to. Maybe because you can beat the dragon uh, in Faerun, but for some reason, there's a room in this house that's just a very simple room that you can't get to the other side of. Possibly, whenever you're alone in space and you're, uh, you're traveling wherever you want to go in your nightcraft, maybe Isma Shan just wants to go back somewhere that's safe. And how do you deal with that? Uh, before we start, I've already spoken to all the players about consent uh, and discussing with them what they're comfortable and not comfortable with. Uh, the Darkest House is not a game of body horror or torture. Uh, it's a game which, you know, uh, one of my favorite horror games is Shadow of the Demon Lord. And I know I have to tone things back uh, for some players with that. This isn't a game like that. This is a ghost story, a haunted house story more than a ghost story. Um, how you've all come here, and I'm going to do my first screen share, so a little behind the magic. Uh, whenever I'm going to show something, I'm probably going to screen share. Why? Because I play via Zoom. And for me, this becomes the easiest. Now, I could have downloaded this image. I chose to screen cap it. Uh, but for any image in the darkest house, you can go ahead and download. There's links to download the file. Um, I just want to show the house and it all its glory. I love this art. Uh, each of you came here for a, a different way. <clears throat> um, and we're going to go in reverse order here, kind of. For Thrail, you saw the house by itself, sitting there in a no-name village, a no-name town. But the village having this appearance of being, you know, quintessential, stereotypical uh, fantasy town. You know, here's this Victorian home 
that's twisted out of time and place. And it's weird. And of all the challenges you've ever seen and faced, something about this house seemed much more dangerous, much more, much more deadly. And since it stood out from everything else, you had to step inside. For Mervok, uh, the lighthouse, the, ba- the big space station that you exist upon, uh, has always given you access to, uh, to uh, any system's grid, internet, that you travel to. Now that you are in the Algamron system in our campaign, uh, it's a new grid for you to explore. But when you set your shadow out to just roam around the grid, you found a simple file labeled uh, the house hates you buried in uh, the dark, the dark grid. After clicking the file, not only did you send your shadow through, you went through as well. For Isma, there you were on Narharai when our short campaign kind of ended uh, with your new friends. Uh, you barely knew because there was a short campaign. Ready to go back into the night itself. But there was a doorway, a portal in that weird forest that you were near. Calling out to your friends, they ignored you. And they were all jerks anyway, especially Rosie, the party's artificially intelligent character played by my wife, Jen. Um, why not open the door? and shred some more walls, right? You know, I didn't do any of these for Splinter because we wanted to see if Splinter lived or died today during today's game. But for Splinter, you all made your way back to Mustertown to, uh, to spend the fortune in gold that you had. So excited that you just finished a really, really hard quest. And uh, while drunk one night, uh, spending some of your money, a door was opened for you to a house and a figure that just kind of laughed, said, come on in, my dwarven friend. And since you already had three beers, you were like, why not? And now you are in a living room and we are going to show what you all see. Hopefully you all right now see a living room. (laughs) If you don't, please tell me. Those of you watching, this isn't live on Twitch, so you can't tell me anything. (laughs) I see the room. This is just what it appears to be. A very mundane looking living room in a house. It's dusty. There are cobwebs and half the furniture uh, is covered in sheets, which are also dusty. Maybe someone was going to do some work here and they stopped. Maybe the house was for, was for sale and it no longer is. The lighting is dim. Even uh, the, those among you that have uh, dark vision or shadow sight, that would be the party's drow or dwarf. It's really hard to see in here. The walls are plaster. There are windows to the, your left that you see. There's also a single exit that leads into a dark room or hallway ahead. And there's a piece of paper on the ground. You think that maybe there's, there's that closet, maybe the door is opened and closed a bit. That said, you're all standing around each other. A dwarf, an alien, a human, and a drow. What are you going to do? I will pick up a pick up piece of paper. Well, as soon as you approach the paper and you reach down, you feel wrong. The the paper has something on the on the other side of it that makes you uncomfortable even coming near it, just seeing it, you know, uh, from from behind, like like whatever you're you can see kind of the reverse of it. So uh, your fingers touch it and you hear just a scratching. Where did it come from? The scratching? Yeah. It came from inside you, it feels like. That's not (laughs) good. Your hand is on the paper. What are you gonna do? You're gonna continue to pick it up? Is there anything on this side of the paper? Or is it blank on this side? Bleed. The bleed of the ink through the paper. The paper is a piece of just, for you, you would know it's printer paper. 
crinkled along the edges as if it's been here for a long time, yelled a bit in the middle like something's dripped on it, possibly coffee, maybe tea. You're not sure. All right. Well, I need, I need information, so I'm going to pick it up. What you see on the other side of the paper is possibly the most upsetting thing you've ever seen. It's a series of words, words that shake you to your core, that have you just not sure who you are. This paper is attacking your mind. So Andy, you need to resist this. Now you're a rating two character, correct? I am. So you're gonna roll your dice, you're gonna roll 2d6 plus your rating against this and make sure to roll the house die. That's a third D6. And if that die is higher than the other, and either the other two dice, or I'm sorry, both of the other two dice, we have a, we have a problem. Okay. So my total on the two dice is an eight for a total of 10. Okay. I rolled a six on, on the house die. If the, House die is higher than either of the. Yeah, is it high? So it's higher of uh, higher than. So what are your other two dice? It's higher than both. They're both fours. Oh, okay. Andy, you resist the paper, but you can't let anyone else see this clue. So what do you have there? Before you, so Isma's talking to you, but before you could even even do anything, you're now crumpling it up. You need to eat this piece of paper. They can't see it. I, I do it. I just shiver it in my mouth and start chewing. What? <laughs> you reach out and try to <clears throat> smack it out of his hand. Ray, you're quick on Isma's fast, and, and it yeah. sounds like it, it sounds like uh, Thrail's gonna help. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna. <clears throat> what are you I doing? Will, I will. I would like to cast word of command and tell him to stop. Ooh. Well, let's do one thing at a time. We're all just okay. dogpiling in. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to eat it. And you're like, no, don't eat it. Oh. All right. So, well, Ray, since you're so quick, we don't really play around with initiative in this game. So why don't you go ahead, and this is movement-based. So okay, you're going to move. roll versus Andy, essentially. So on my side, I know that Andy's rating is a two. Uh, any kind of challenge roll is going to be set. You're rolling against seven plus the ratings. You're rolling against the nine. But since your movement is your special ability, I'm giving you a boon. So your yeah. boon is you get to roll three dice instead of two. But don't forget the house die. Yeah, I got four dice in my hand. Okay, so the house die came up a two, and I got a five and a three. There we go. Okay, so what's your total? Ten is my Ten. total. So you've you beat it. So you, I'm going to say you stopped Andy's hand. And uh, Thrail, since you were the last, uh, or Tree, you were the last to mention Thrail was going in, you're going to hit it out of his hand? Yeah. All right, yeah. so you make a roll as well. So, uh, so Isma's struggling with his hand, and behind all of you, you've got, you can hear the muttering of Splinter calling to Danethar already, ready to cast a spell if need be. Uh, I add my uh, rating to it, you, you said? Correct. 2D, okay. you're going to make sure you add your rating. So I got a six and a two, and my rating is a three. So that's an uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got a one on the house die. There's no way the house die is going to affect you as long as you have a six. So you smack the paper, and I'm going to say that since 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 Mark was uh, his character was already ready to like to do something, the paper actually lands at the feet of Splinter. Don't don't read that. Um, the paper starts to unfold. Destroy I step it. On I, it. I step on it. You just step on the paper? Yeah, I smash it to the ground with my boot. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and attack the piece of paper. So make a roll with your, so add your rating. Yep. And since you are so much bigger than it, I'll give you a, a boon on this also. <laughs> All right. So we will roll three plus the house. Uh, let's see. So the house die is a three, and I've got a five and three. Uh, so my total is a ten, and the house does not have any power over me. You destroy the piece of paper. You actually crush it, and it it it. You hear a little bit of a, oh, 
when the paper is crushed. When you move your foot away, you just see the paper fall into the floor and dissipate. Uh, I've never seen parchment do that before. No, it's very strange. Uh, but there's, uh, I have a reading four on arcana understanding. Am I getting a sense of anything apart from being <laughs> generally unsettled? Uh, the general uns the general uns uh, unsettlement is very strong right now. Sure, <laughs> everything feels wrong. You, you I've gotten that far. <laughs> you definitely feel like there's something amiss in this room, but not not from the paper, not from the paper below. Uh, not really. There's there is a low level of magic at work, but. Uh, you know, for you in this house, even as powerful as you are, what's kind of disturbing is like, it would be like if you just learned first grade arithmetic and someone handed you a calculus textbook and said, okay, try this next. That's the level of magic at work in the structure of the floor below you. Right. That's, that's super messed up for throw. <laughs> to, to feel that way. Um, you have the rest of the room. Ahead of I uh, use my quarter staff to kind of like at a range, kind of open up the closet door. <laughs> sure. Anything in there? So you you step forward and and the closet door just creaks as it opens, and inside you see coats and jackets and a shelf with something dark that's just reaching over the shelf. It looks kind of like a hand, but it's stuck. There's a broken umbrella in the back of the, of, the, of, of the closet. And on the floor are a few very old letters that are like envelopes that are sealed and closed. I'll call over to Splinter. Uh, dwarf, I need your eyes. <laughs> and ask him to <laughs> look, at, look at the thing. Look uh, at the th the the shadowy figure. See if he is able to see it better. Can I open up the curtains to give everyone a bit more light as they're searching around? Of course. That is a great Ray, you, idea. you pull the curtain <laughs> back, and the light from the curtains is gone, and the room is dark again. And outside, it is night, but not just night, like black, like someone painted the entire world on the other side with that blackest paint possible, that one that absorbs like all right. <laughs> yeah. You see nothing out there. And it is the, the most empty you've ever felt. I'm just gonna stare out that window while <clears throat> the dwarf does whatever with those papers. <laughs> Seeing that the that is tried to open the window for some light, I'm going to see this lamp on the table there and attempt to turn it on. So you just, you know, click the, click the lamp mm -hmm. and there's the, a, a light comes on and then fades and gives you just enough light in the room that you can kind of see back to how it started. Like the light that I'm showing you in the image, because the curtains are the light, the, whatever light came from the curtains came from the curtains and it ended. So you have just enough light. There's a flicker every once in a while and then it goes away. It's you also hear a bouncing of something in the hall ahead. It's plugged in, this, this Bop. lamp? Bop. The one you just turned on? Yeah. No. Oh. I'm gonna pick it up then. You you have a lamp. I'm it. I have uh, dancing lights as a cantrip on my character sheet. Mm -hmm. Is that something I can try and cast? I, th a that's, bit of I think that's fair. Yeah. So what, how, do, how, how does that spell work? As someone who's unfamiliar with the Indie 5th edition, sure. play it, but what is, how does that spell work? So it's, it's a, a, a cantrip that is a, basically means I can cast it whenever at no cost. <laughs> um, it no spell cost, like slot cost or whatever. Sure. But um, effectively, it's just it's a couple of globules of light that kind of move where you tell them to. And it's a source of arcane light um, in, in a limited area. So the lights flitter about the room and give you a bit more light, about as much as the, uh, as much as the, uh, the lamp did. However, whenever they flitter near the, 
this. Uh, kind of they flutter near that. The lights just disintegrate and fall to the ground. Like they flutter about everywhere but there. Oh, oh no. Did uh, did the dwarf see anything useful when, when I called him over? <clears throat> the dwarf hasn't had a chance to get a word in edgewise. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, dwarf. So you know the the so Splinter kind of looks askance at this you know uh, uppity dark elf and then grumbles something about having a name, um, and he will go over to the to the shelf and he will take a look for something. It's that a good point. Go ahead. Might have been seen. So the shelf. You mean the shelf in the closet? I mean that's where I was directed with the with the little yeah. bit of the hand sticking off the edge. Mm -hmm. Maybe. That's what I had asked him to take a look at because I wasn't able to really see it. Mark, go. The hand, as you poke about, the hand falls right on your face, and it's if you swat it away, <coughs> and it lands next to you, and you just look down and your dwarf sight, you can see. You think it says like maybe Timberland on the side of it. <laughs> you don't know what that means though, coming from a DCC world. Whether it's the name of the the, the <laughs> craftsman that built it, it's some arcane device or whatever. <laughs> Clearly from some woodland folk. It's so so it, it stopped moving though, and then and so when, it's a glove. And, well, yeah, it's a glove. And when the glove came and fell upon you, you do notice behind the glove, and you're on your tippy toes, because dwarf. Uh, you see, there's a box behind where the glove was. I will pull down the box. I first, I will kick the 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 glove in the direction of Thrail, and then I will pick up and pull the box down from the shelf. So. Inside the box is a small bit of torn canvas with a large green eye painted on it, about life size. Does does this does this eye remind me of anything? Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> it's not from the adventure we played earlier that was in DCC. <laughs> the entirely eyeball and focused adventure. Okay, what? good. No, I don't. <laughs> unless Monty Cook went back in time and and listened into our session and put it in writing here, I don't think so. All right. There's also a few other envelopes in this box, similar to the ones on the floor. It looks like, and there's a few dead flies. Uh, the the envelopes look to be mail. Uh, addressed to one Philip Harlock. Okay. You have and an I offer will... uh, for uh, you have a, 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 an offer from a local hardware store, and you see one from an insurance agent, and uh, you see an invoice uh, from a mail order bookseller for two books. One is called Automatic Writing, and the other is The Bell Signals Night. Hmm. Well, I don't know what any of this means. Well, we just insert it into, into this very room. It would be like all at once, just like bam, we were, we were here. You, you, it wasn't like pop. I mean, you all came through your own way. So, I mean, Andy, you were like sort of teleported here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Ray and uh, Tree and Mark, you all entered through a doorway. And and the door was is behind you. And Andy, you see the door, the front door. Of the house. You can, is there anything outside? I mean, do you want to open the front door? Yes, I will do that. You open the front door, and the front door is still closed. Like, as soon as you open it, the door is closed. Like the door is, is it a second door there? You see, you think that at first, but then you realize the door that you open, the door that you had your hand on isn't there anymore and it's just closed. Oh. Ooh, the worst one see this? Uh, you, you glance over for a minute, kind of disturbed still that your poor dancing light spells are dying as they come towards the, the inky blackness behind <laughs> that hallway. And you see Andy's opening a door and opening a door and opening a door. Yeah, I don't think 
you're getting out that way. Huh. It seems like it's not, I don't know what it is. Ray, I think you're muted. And whoever's I'm playing Zoom there. Bingo at home, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's nothing out there. It's all empty. It's all black. Apparently, maybe Ray's may have said other things in the last five minutes, but no one heard it because he was staring out the window. <laughs> I was staring out the window for the last five minutes. He was he was talking to the void, and the void was talking back. Mark, did did did, did Splinter show the picture to anyone else? Uh, no. Okay. No, you, all I you, said you, was you, I looked through the papers and I said I don't understand any of this, and then I I figure I'd probably just drop the box on the the coffee table there. Are you keeping anything from the box? Uh, I I I think I'm gonna keep that little a uh, drawing of the eye. You think it's it, more? It reminds me of of of. Good home. times. You think it's more important than the than the ad for the hardware store? I'm just kidding. Yes. It is probably more important. I <laughs> a deal this week at True Value. <laughs> I'm wait, Andy, Andy, Andy started, so it's gonna yeah, be yeah, next. Yeah, go Hearing that he says he doesn't understand what he found, I'm gonna go try to find some information about that. I don't know, pick up the box that he put down. Okay. Uh, in inside the box, you see what I just described: several invoice, an invoice for a mail order bookseller for two books, automatic writing, and the bell signals night. And you also see the offer for a local hardware store and an insurance agent. These and seem, this is all addressed to Philip Harlock. These seem to be ancient correspondence. Yeah, this is definitely not email from the grid. They used paper back then to write, to write by, and they send it physically. It's very upsetting for you. <clears throat> but uh, this is something about a hardware store. Some place they sell hardware. What's a hardware store? I don't armor. know. Armor. <clears throat> it's it's armor. Pro, it's wear that is hard. It's armor. It's pieces of tools on there. But tools aren't hardware. Hardware is computer programs. What's no. a computer? Uh, what? <laughs> the computer. You know, like the nanotechnology. <laughs> okay, so now the, the rest of the game is just going to be asking Andy what things are. <laughs> <laughs> hardware is like computers. Are you just speak like a sorcerer. <laughs> and Thrill tosses her head like he wishes he spoke like a sorcerer. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, that door is not going to. It's just another door, and another, another door, and another, another door. That that is correct. The uh, the only exit at this point seems to be the hall where all light so far has died. Uh, Can I take a couple of minutes? I'm going to take a couple of minutes and uh, remove the sheets from those chairs, especially the couch. It looks lumpy in an odd way. Hmm. It is lumpy in an odd way. Okay. So Isma removes the sheet from the first chair. And it's <coughs> just a just a fabric chair. The second chair is the same. The third chair, the same. On the couch, you you put your hands on the sheet to pull it back. Whatever is under the sheet just jerks quickly, but then stops. And you stop, and you stop pulling the sheet down. Do you want to continue pulling the sheet down? Uh, yeah. I just pull it harder and faster now. You whip the sheet away, and just floating down to the, to the couch itself is a few wisps of hair. Like something was there and moved quicker than you could move and is not here anymore. And you hear a couple footsteps to your right and you look down the, and you look towards the darkness. And maybe, just maybe a tiny little. <laughs> I start moving down toward the hall. <laughs> okay, are you gonna move into the hall? Yeah, I'm chasing it down. All right, so you're going down the hallway. You guys just see him disappear in the black. 
this is the other way. Actually, <laughs> what uh, what what Thrill would have been doing like while this had been out, because it's it's very unsettling that this feels as uh like limiting as it is. Like she keeps trying to reach for power that just doesn't seem to be there. Sure. And now like her simplest spell is failing at this hallway and it's really messing with her. So she's kind of trying to investigate like why it's failing specifically at this hallway as Isma like runs past. <laughs> so Isma is now going down the hall. Uh Murvok and uh Splinter. Is it um <clears throat> is it, I mean, this wait, one, one at a time. So Murvok first. This duck hallway is where, is where I went. Where's this duck portal? It, I mean, there's that? is there is there any what? This duck portal is where you went, went to. Went out. I mean, it's the one that's ahead of you. It's like there's okay. Yeah, you said you saw the couch before, so I thought he might have gone the other way. Yeah. So so just to show where he went, oh. like this is what he pulled down, and the giggle was from over here, he ran that way. Okay. and he ran that way. You didn't. Uh, no one saw anything. Did we hear the laughter though? Hmm. Yes, fleeting. But yes. Okay. Mark, how about uh, what is uh, what is Splinter doing? I'm gonna go to the to the hall, but I'm not gonna go in. I'm just gonna look down. Can I see anything down there? Uh, dark vision. You think you see ahead of you? You think you see on the floor? you see that maybe there is an indentation uh, of a foot, like someone has stepped here and actually made a mark on the floor. Do you want to step forward and take a look? Um, I will share before he does that spells that should not be feeling are feeling in this area. And I will throw back over my shoulder, uh, your magic may be failing, but my God, is ne it will never fail me. And uh, I will... Um, I'm going to cast a, a Holy Sanctuary on myself. Well, before we do that, <laughs> let's show what the hallway looks like here. I think it's important. I love that uh, we're building, we're trying to build in our truths and lies. Like, I, I'm finding that a lot of fun. This is a very accurate picture of the hallway. <laughs> Just black? <laughs> I thought I knew that was coming. I don't know what I well, expected, but that was a great sight gag, and I'm here for it. Ray's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Did we catch the guy, that, that, that guy's name before he ran off the, from there? It won't nope. Uh, that dead guy. <laughs> I, I, I am going to show something. Uh, actually, before, before I even do this, I think, to stop share, uh, I'm going to share a different screen. All my players close their eyes. How about this? Players, close your eyes. Right. So everyone watching from home, I've been operating off of, you may have seen this index. This was from the Darkest House uh, Kickstarter, and we had started in the living room. And everything I was just describing, and again, this is, this is work in progress. So the art is loaded down here, and I just downloaded the art there, and it went to my file, and that's how I shared it. And this image here is what I was showing. Uh, this will eventually there'll be a map up here. It'll look much better and much more formal, obviously, when this is over. Uh, when they went from area to area to explore, I went, you know, and just clicked over here. And then uh, when they went to the lightless hallway, all I had to do was click the lightless hall. Now we are going to go through this area, which this room hallway isn't completely finished, as you can see. And there is no image because there's no light. However, because I wanted to add a bit myself, I just took a picture of nothing. And I decided to screen share it. So they now they hear me talking. So we're going to stop sharing this and pretend <laughs> they didn't hear any of that. And now we're going to go back to sharing what they do see, which is a big load of nothing. Hey guys, we're hey, oh, back. We good? Right. Yes. So you are in the darkness, and you you know that there's been a great lead taken from uh, your your party's speedy Jack. So Isma. Uh, before, well, Mark, you, I'm, because of what uh, Sanctuary does, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make you roll that right now. We're just going to let you cast the spell, okay? Right. If we have to interact with it at all, we'll say it does something. Okay. Red. Are there little red specks in the black, or is there something on my computer screen? <laughs> you tell uh, me. You know what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mine's doing it, so I can't tell. There are... There are 
little oh red okay thank god i'm like what can i got this in, in the back <laughs> okay you're just okay. in your like living room right <laughs> you're no, i'm in my, I'm in my bedroom. bedroom oh okay okay yeah yeah no, I'm just asking because, like, that one thing. So, all right, oh, yeah, wait, okay. So, wait, wait, wait. So, uh, Ray, so you're you're running forward and you're trying to catch up to something, right? All right, Ray. I would like you to make a roll for you doing something speed related, but it's very, very dark. So, actually, I'm cans. I'm not giving you a a boon on this. I'm giving you a bane, which will cancel out your boon, but at least for you, since you're quickly, you're running in the darkness. All right. So it's a great roll. Yep. And you're going to make sure your house die is there and tell me the result. <clears throat> Oi, ay, ay. Uh, I rolled snake eyes. So that's a, a four. But uh, obviously, my house die of five is way higher. <laughs> Ray, you're running, and then all of a sudden, you feel the floor give out to like sand and like quicksand and you like splash forward into the floor. You cannot see anything. And the rest of you all behind and just hear a Ooh. splash, like something's just mo like just getting dumped into a swamp. And you, and you don't smell or see anything. You just hear something ahead and you're guessing from the sound of it, it's, it's Isma is having a really challenging time because the house has decided maybe you shouldn't be running right now. Running Short man. dangerous. Short man, where are you? <laughs> so you're the rest of you are behind and yeah. what I just have to ask, Maisha, what is moving behind you in the screen, off screen? Like behind you. What is moving behind you? Wait, in the game are you seeing something? No, <laughs> behind you. What's moving behind you? I don't I, I I'm not sure what you're asking. Do you have a cat? Not in the room with me. You sure? <laughs> okay. And this is amazing. <laughs> I really I'm just, no, you know what? It, sometimes when when I've read this game, sometimes things bleed over to both worlds. So just the house. <laughs> the house oh, man. does hate you. Oh, All right. Shit. So Andy and and Shannon I keep I keep going and call it I keep calling Tree Shannon. I keep <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, it's so funny. All right. Uh, so oh, Ray is gosh. splashed into the ground. Uh, well, not Ray, Isma. I can't go through those kind of effects and just put sand in, in Ray's room there, as funny as that would be. <laughs> the rest of you can't see him, but you can hear him. What is Isma saying? The giggling is gone. <laughs> You're not like submerged. You're up to like your waist right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm in some sort of quicksand. I can't, every time I struggle, I seem to sink just a little bit more. Uh, can someone throw me a line or something to get me out? This is awful. I can't move. Can my shadow help here? Sure, I Andy. Put an end to. Oh, yeah. This is nope. the perfect time. So your shadow is a computer program that when you want it, it just exists and comes here. And in a normal alternative game, you never exist in the same place as your shadow. But this isn't normal, and this is an alternative. So your shadow just stands there ahead of you. Here's the thing, though. None of you can see each other. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. But you do see your shadow. You see the outline of this figure, as do the rest of you. It's just kind of like this greenish glow forms around this figure, and the shadow is there. And there's ah, a bright flash that? of green eyes. The shadow just kind of like gets ready to do whatever you're going to do. It's you kind of know it's me. your shadow, Andy. Mm -hmm. Mervok is very uncomfortable around it. <laughs> Command it as you will, sir. If something with green eyes is coming for me. No, no, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's <What>? good. <laughs> that's scary. Good. It's scary. It usually doesn't exist in the real world, but it's here now, so I might as well use it. You're really making him comfortable. <laughs> so, uh, it, feeling better. Let him, let him pull you out of the, of the whatever, whatever you're in. It's going to help me? Yeah, it's going to help you. Okay. Mark. Yo. Uh, while the shadow is moving towards this, yeah. I'm going to say that you're actually ahead of the shadow a bit. 
Okay. The shadow, as it's moving towards where you hear, where Splinter wait, hears wait, is. Wait, so, that, so I'm in the hallway now? Yeah, you're in the hallway now. I don't remember stepping into the hallway. You didn't, you don't remember stepping into the hallway either. Hey. Okay. So, but here's the thing. Here's the more important thing. You're actually deeper than the other characters. As the shadow that, that Murvok has summoned moves by you, like there's a brief glimmer on the outside of your body and the shadow gives you a wide berth. Oh, shit. So the shadow continues towards Isma, and you see this looming green figure move down the hallway, right? And it eventually steps forward, goes to its knees, and reaches its hand to you. You're muted, Ray. Or it's the shadow. He's muffled by the shadow. <laughs> Ray, you have to speak up. I, I reach out uh, while I'm saying it's okay, right? It's it's. I, I, I can you help so. me. What is the shadow? What are you going to say to the shadow, Andy? To the shadow? What What is the shadow going to say to him? You can control that. Oh, okay. Let me help you. The the the, the shadow says to you. You don't hear uh, Murvok's words, right? You hear. If you give me a secret, I'll let you up. Okay. Just one, and we can't tell Mervok. This is between the two of us. Just give me one secret, and I'll help you up. I'm scared. <laughs> you should be. It then takes your hands and gently lifts you up out of the sandy floor and the floor solidifies beneath your feet and light, a greenish light, just comes through the room and lights up. And now ahead of you is another door, a very simple wooden door that looks to be like any door you'd find in the house. And there's a door behind you as well that you don't ever remember being there. Do we see this green light coming? Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I see any of this activity? You do. And the hallway is at most 20 feet end to end. There's no way this all happened in a hall this long. You mean this short? Whatever. <laughs> yes. This so there's, no other, there's no other doors along the, the sides. There's just the door at the end. A door ahead and a door behind you. Both doors look like they match the out, like the same cutout of what you went through to get in here. You don't ever remember there being a door in the hall you came through. It was an open, open archway. It was an open opening. Um, what are time hmm. costs or lights? Is, is the shadow yeah. still up by by Isma? Uh, one, one, so Thrail, you're gonna you're gonna cast a light spell. I'm gonna try and cast same spell thing, dancing light. lights. Uh no, different spell. This is like a more powerful <laughs> spell where it like dispels the arcane darkness. It's so a, you it's start a, to summon the power within you to cast this spell, and you feel like something is resisting. So I need you to roll to cast this spell. The the room okay. does not want you to cast this. More important, the house doesn't want you. To. Okay, so uh, is my rating three or four on this? So I think for this, since it's a, it's a powerful spell you just said, let's make it yeah. a rating four spell. Okay, uh, so I got a six and a two on my dice plus the four, which is a 12, and a two on the house dice. All right, so the house doesn't take, the house gives up. You like just sort of pull this power forward and the rest of you see a brilliant light that just brings the whole room. What color is the room now? Uh, it's like a light sort of uh, greenish hue, like a Disney villain green. <laughs> so the, 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 the room is Disney gr villain green. The one opportunity that Thrail had to make this a more uplifting room <laughs> and she chose not to. She still this, kept it creepy. This feels very wholesome to me. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> the house, you feel the house give up. 
in what it's trying to do to you, which what, what you're trying to take control of the, of the lighting. And you now have a perfectly well lit green creepy room. Awesome. Did At you, least we can see what's happening. Did you all hear that sound just before I came down this hall? What sound? It sounded like a the laughter. A child laughing, and it happened after I removed uh, the covering from that um, furniture. Well, I think then, it came from there, and it got past me somehow, and that's why I chased down. I did hear it for a moment, but don't see any children in this area, so... Maybe they went through that door. Mark, um, you originally saw a footprint on the floor. Yeah, that's what I was trying to look for, but now I'm apparently halfway down the hallway. Well, you see the footprint still uh, at the door behind you if you want to go look at it. Oh, God, no. Better, better <laughs> lit now. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, there, you have to choose a door. Uh, I can't door. because there's a shadow that's evil at one end and there's a sorcerer that's evil at the other. Problem is you don't remember which way was which now. You don't remember? No. Oh. No. <laughs> Well, wouldn't the foot, would that be the one we came from? Or at least that's the way that... Um, I never stepped is, into the hallway, Isma. I never even stepped into the hallway. And now here I am. In the middle of the hallway. Not even at the end. On either side of the hall, you see the indentation, a glowing red indentation of something child size, foot length leading to either door. You're going both ways. Correct. Well, <clears throat> there's always the third way, and I take my hammer and I start smashing the wall. Okay. Um, so, Mark, go ahead and make a roll to smash the wall. All right. I help. I have disrupting touch. So oh, okay. I like weaken the the wall from a molecular level. Nice. All right. So Ray, how about you roll first and see if you can weaken the wall? Okay. Expecting something horrible to happen, I'm gonna throw up a shield. <laughs> All right. So you're you have you have affected a shield. So if something affects you or damages you, we'll say the shield. Is up, okay. So I rolled a five, two twos, but the house die is uh, a four. So, oh, it's the house die wins. Yeah. <laughs> Can amazing. I? Is that the first time in this game the house dies won? No, it's won like three times. The oh, house amazing. is winning a lot. Amazing. Did you mention the mechanic of where I could use the house die? Yeah, I did. Can I? Can we go over that and do oh, that? Absolutely. If you'd like, you can have the house help you and you can definitely have that five. Oh boy. So where's that gonna happen? You should do it. <laughs> so my total would be uh four, five, six, seven. Hmm. You want the house to die instead, right? Is it instead of one of my regular die or is it in addition to Ooh, what was that? Do I add all three dice together now, or do I? Uh, no, it, oh, yeah. It, my lowest. If you do this, the house die is added to the result. Okay. Oh, so cool. Four, uh, eight, nine is my result then. All right. Mark, but I gave into the house a little. Mark, you gave mm -hmm. into the house. You gave into the house. There ain't no little. You gave into the house, Mark. <laughs> yo. As far as you can see, you have weakened the uh the wall quite a bit and i'm sorry uh, uh isma did and it's very brittle so okay. you get to go ahead and make your roll with a boon all right and, and since you have a hammer let's say that the hammer is uh your attack with the hammer is a rating three does that make sense make sense okay so um with the rating three, I've got an 11, and the house die was only a two. So, yeah, it does not like me. I, I rolled a five and a three. 
Okay, so you you successfully break down the wall. Yep. Is there a room on the other side? There's a door on the other side. What the? <laughs> Is it the same door? It's on the edge. It's the same door. Ray, you now feel something bad. Ray, first off, you now have a doom. Okay. So this, uh, so you gain a doom and it will definitely haunt you uh, as the game progresses. Um, but we'll just keep that aside for now. Uh, all right. What, what, what does it mean to have a doom? You know, I don't think I want to describe it right now. Okay, that's fair. It means that you're doomed. Uh, yeah. In the or name. <laughs> put on a space marine outfit and... I was going to say that's a different game, but it could very easily be this game. <laughs> Mark, since yep. you did succeed, and I don't want to have this be something that is negative since you've had a success here, you have this feeling this is the safest of the three doors to go through, even if it's all the same door. Mm, all right. I will, is it a handle? Is there like a, a knob or is it just a push or? There is an old timey, or for you as a fantasy character, a very new age handle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will, I will reach out and turn the handle. I feel like I shouldn't be the only one doing this. I'd like Ray, if you could please, as close to your microphone, make the most creepy, Eek sound possible for this door opening up. You now see a different room. So everyone close your eyes for a moment. I'm gonna go back to our player, to our, our viewers at home and just show something here. Don't look. All right. Actually, even better, no, don't hear a sound off. That doesn't make any sense. All right. So <laughs> we're now going here and we have this room and a lot of you might have remember seeing this if you've seen the Kickstarter and what I'm going to do here to, to show this image to them, I'm going to choose download and I'm going to open this and now I have the, that's it. That's all I had to do. And now I have the, the picture right there. It's two clicks. I'm operating off of a uh, Mac and uh, I am running this through Google Chrome. But um, so, but there we go. We have, we have this scene here, and then I'm gonna stop sharing this, and I'm gonna start sharing what my very lovely players see. Everyone, open your eyes to Ooh. this new reality. Ooh. This is a huge room. Oh, this does not match the architecture. With oh, a man. wooden flooring, but brick walls. And, and that's small tiles on the corner. Oh, yeah, no, that's that's the most <laughs> terrifying part. <laughs> on the right-hand side, the brick wall is a number of large, high-placed windows that show only darkness. But it's clear a little light's coming through. Oh, man. The left this... side, the, it goes on for as far as you can see, which isn't very far. And what you think you... The weird thing is that the thing that you're, I'm seeing right there is, like, very similar to what's in my tree's room. It's that little thing that's standing there. Stop it! <laughs> and the, which corner? Well, I don't know. There's, there's something. Oh, in, in Tree's room? No, I know. I know we're talking about in Tree's room. So the closet. <laughs> but in this yeah, the thing standing in Tree's uh, closet. <laughs> holy shit, guys! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> there's what definitely like. Shady black like shadows back. I know, I know. The one that waved to me is the creepiest. Okay. <laughs> Intellectually, I know it's t-shirts. <laughs> but in my heart, it's definitely a ghost child. Well, maybe you're fortunate, and maybe this thing down there that you can barely see is just t-shirts. <laughs> this was the thing this room friend. I'm not gonna point it out. Apparently, Mervok can't see it. Oh, man. Mervok, I should point out that your shadow isn't here right now. Gone? It is not here. Okay. 
Did my shield follow me into this room? Like that? Uh, okay. Yes, your shield is still up. And I believe, right. Mark, you still have a holy sanctuary up, correct? Uh, you know what? Let me check the duration on that. That, that, might, that might be seconds, not minutes. Now, folks at home, please realize I'm not messing around with how we're going to translate each spell. I'm letting the spells pretty much function like they do in their other games. So yeah. uh, cool. this way, uh, we're going to the extreme here with four different systems and essentially like three different genres. But for the most part, uh, we can find ways to translate this very easily. Yeah, no, Sanctuary is, is, is seconds, not minutes. So Okay, so That's your gone. Sanctuary is down. That little Holy Aura is no longer up. But... I would say, Tree, that your shield is still there. Yeah, it's, what do you it's wanna... gonna disappear in any second now because it was only for a minute. Do you see that they're the floorboards are kind of pulled up by that second pillar? And uh, you, you can kind of see the dimensions to the right, but you can't see anything to the left. Shit. No doors? Not that you can see. There is still one behind you. Was it open still? Uh, it is open, yeah, it opens to the hallway. They were just in the hallway. Well, yes, but the door, the other door had closed and couldn't be opened again. So. I don't know what you're talking about, Andy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I guess I'll, this is a more dark, so I'm going to try to re, re-summon my, my spitfire shadow. Sure. This is kind of has to do with hacking. I'm going to let hacking work for you, and you can go ahead and make a rating three roll for this. Uh, so I roll three dice and take the best two. No. No, you're, rating three. So you're, you're still adding roll. three to your roll. Two d six plus the house die. All right. All right. Oh, the house, die? Add, add dice. the house die. You don't add in. You just roll it, and it's it's. Oh, your I see. I yeah, sorry. Plus adding and numbers. and the house die. Yeah. Got it. Well, this house is really having a fun day. <laughs> I think I, I probably failed and summoned the house. I got two twos for a total of seven. Okay. And the three on the house die. So you start to summon your shadow back and you see a green outline come all around the shadow and the shadow fully forms in front of you, goes to bow to serve you and then thwack, an arrow goes through the shadow and an, an electron filled green arrow as it looks like your other shadow doesn't want to have a friend and your your shadow you just tried summoning falls into <sighs> pixels on the floor do i see the first shadow uh no but you do hear <laughs> That's it. From something that you can't see, but the rest of the players <laughs> seem to be able to. Pretty, pretty <laughs> sure that thing's evil, man. I, I'm gonna go run and tackle it. All right. So, so we're just wait. What are you running and tackling? The that, shadow. That child thing keeps, in the corner. It keeps, keeps getting away from me. Why? Why do you do impulsive, rash things <laughs> that get the rest of us in trouble? <laughs> that that's what Isma do. <laughs> <laughs> Speed, man. Speed All right. on ice. So, so Isma runs off towards the the giggling. What are the other three of you doing? <laughs> um, running away. <laughs> I mean, you still have some other things here you can check, or you can go take after him. Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, if, if I see that he's running towards the kid, I'm gonna try and help with like a magic missile cast. Okay. Pew, pew, pew. All right. So you uh, go ahead and make a spell for magic missile. So a spell. So um, again, and I can't remember. In fifth edition, the spell just works, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, force damage, if that makes a difference. Like no, I'm going to say you still have to try to cast it here. Sure. Because that's how. No, that, that's how it is in the yeah. thing as well. Like I think you oh, you have to try and cast them, and then if you succeed, it's X. If you fail, it's X times two or something. Sure, you're just firing into the darkness. Yep, yep. Uh, into the thing that I think I see. Uh, magic six... missile of the darkness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, six and one uh, on my dice plus the four rating or three? We'll see a four, that's fine. So it's an okay. 11. 
Oh, uh, and a six on the host day. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't beat your other six, so you're okay. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so sweet. Six and one plus four. I'm sorry. Is a uh, is a yeah. Is an eleven. Fourteen. Why can't I math today. No, I can't math either. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, not for D. Ray, <laughs> as Isma's running, you barely make out something childlike in front of you, and then a pair of uh, of magical bolts fly through it, and it's gone. It just dissipates. <laughs> no. As far as you've ran, you turn around, and the door is only 20 feet away that you came through to come in. And the rest of us are like right in front of the door. Yeah. 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 So it's like that ran nowhere, really. Right. Oh, shit. I call to my shadow to see if it'll come to me. You Nothing. shouldn't do that. Nothing answers. Evil. That thing is, is my friend. No, 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 no. It used to no. be. It's definitely evil. No, no, it, there's no thing evil about it. It's just it's a program. No, it's, evil. no it's, it's definitely evil. <laughs> so what do we want to do? Um, I'm going to cast protection from evil on myself. <laughs> you raise a you raise a, a rating three protection from evil on yourself. And this has a this is going to last like twenty minutes. So okay, that's fair. Nice. I want to check. In the floorboard, as floorboards are better. Sure. Shelter. As you step over, there's enough light radiating down from the windows that uh, you can kind of see the floorboard is pried up and the hole continues down, but it kind of narrows uh, as it goes down, and you can't you can't quite see the bottom, but you think there's another object down there. Like a like an edge of a wooden frame that's stuck in the floor. Is the hole big enough for a person to go to, go, to get through? No, you can reach your arm down there, you know, into the darkness below, but you can't put your person down there. I'm doing that right now. You're not reaching into the hole, Andy. Not until you don't. That's that's my that's the last option. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of you see uh, Mervok kind of kneeling in front of this hole. What are you? What are you doing? There's something in there, but given our the, this place's propensity to eat things that go in it, I don't want to put my hand in there. Anybody that have anything? Seems, that seems like wise precaution. Yeah. Anybody have any tools that could that can reach down there? Um, my quarter self, I can go over and I have a crowbar. Oh, yeah, between a crowbar and a quarter staff, you could easily take up some floorboards. Is that what you, you're gonna do? I will hand it to one of them to say here. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, I'm, I'll poke the staff down into the nothing, nothing happens. happens. Mark is uh is Splinter using the crowbar? Um, yeah, I'll Splinter the up. protected from evil one. I'll start prying up floorboards. It doesn't your god have your back here? <laughs> he does. You Yo, start. What happened to the kid? I I think I may have missed that. So it's my like. Right you fired on the kid and the and yeah. or whatever it was, kid or not, and it it's not there anymore. You're not Does really sure where it is. Hit it. Did you like go to tackle it and then yeah. kind of just like face plant it? Well, you blew it up. Your missiles hit it first. Right. And it dis okay. Disappeared and I went right through. Ooh. This is. Oh, what, no. Ah. This is what you find, Andy. In the hole? In the hole. It's a picture. Picture of just a, oh, man. Just a family. So you know? Eyes are like. <laughs> and the, exactly what you see there. And is it, are these scratches on, on glass on top of the picture, or is it the actual picture? The scratches are on the glass itself, and the word "lost" is carved on the top. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. 
and uh, you you kind of pick the picture up, you know, and you take a look. And as soon as you kind of have an idea, it's something's towards the right. You guys hear your shadow, and it just whispers to all you, lights out. It's darkness, man. And that's the end of our demo. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the four of you had a good time and enjoyed. Oh, it was delightful. That. Uh, it was um, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone who watched enjoyed that. Again, go do double check and, and uh, reach out and try the, the Darkest House. Uh, not try. You can actually try. You can go to the Darkest House uh, Kickstarter and you can play around with the features and explore the rooms. And especially that last room we were in, the, I think it was the Boundless Room. So go play around with that and uh, see how it works for you. I want to definitely thank, uh, you know, especially Maitri, Andy, uh, Mark, and Ray. Not especially you all, but because you know it's not us here, you know. But uh, thank you all for joining us. And, uh, you know, we'll have links below to how to get more information to them. For Andy, the link will be just hang out with me and, and you'll see him. <laughs> <laughs> And since I learned how to do this crap on Zoom finally and record a Zoom, maybe I'll do another actual play here or there. You never know. But uh, again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Oh, and, and my trade, de definitely don't open your closet door. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I'm tree, staying tree. in these clothes wait, for the next Wait, wait, like, wait. Don't, don't, don't turn around. What do you, what do you, don't, 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 don't.